We're going to go, we've got, we've got notes on the board to go through with Bobby's drop. There's only one page, you need to look up the reg in your rule book, but we'll do that in a minute. Okay. So the main thing is I'm going to give you my little five minute tour of the cable selection book, the main parts that you need to know. All right. Now with voltage drop, there's no other D ratings that take you into account. So things like HRC fuses, cable um, current ratings, all right? You work out the current on the load, but what I'm kind of saying is, for example, um, it does make a difference if we have aluminium or copper, all right? There's three different, lots of tables in here, but also the temperature is taken into account. But things like depth of lane, um, the, um, if it's set for example, is that mine? No. So the depth of lane, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through the three main tables. So can you turn to page 14 in the book? All right, the reason I'm pointing that out is that page 14 has, page 14 has a table about temperature ratings. And when you look at a question, it'll either go V90 or X90, or it might have HLT 110. To get that definition of what you need to understand, you will find that on this table. So, because when you're going into the voltage drop, if it's got a 90 degree rating, then you will be looking in that column section there. If it's 75 or 45, with the cable says it is on the voltage drop, you need to look up that column. Are we all aware of that? So, let's also now turn to the back of the book to appendix. If we have a look at appendix B, you'll see, now not many people use this appendix, because they're too busy looking at the front. So the appendix lists every table in the book. Now if you go to appendix B and you have a look at number one, it sort of talks about that one I talked about there, limiting temperature rate of insulated cables. So anything to do with temperature size of cables, this table is also found in the 3008 book, 3000 a to 3000 as well. So the table's in both areas. If you have a look at the next three, three one to three four, that's what we'll be using for cable selection. We're not interested in that at the moment. That runs, they give you the reference guides to run from table four through to table 17, 18, and then we have what you call after that, up to 25, all the D ratings. Our main table we're looking for, it starts from table 40, all right? So if you have a look at table 40, it says three phase voltage drop. So the table 40, 41 and 42 are to do with copper. 43, 44 and 45 are to do with aluminium. Okay. There's three different ways you look at the tables. Table 40 is for trefoil. Does everybody understand what trefoil is? That's when you cable tie two cables, two on the bottom and one on the top on a cable tray and they're in a triangular shape. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The next one is basically called single cables or enclosed. So that means if you have three single cables on a cable tray or they're enclosed in some type of conduit or any type of enclosure, that's for table 41. 42 is for multi-core cables, any type of multi-core cable. So the, the difference between the three of them is not very vast in, in, at all. And the same with 44, 45 and 46, they kind of repeat themselves for aluminium. Make sure you read the question because the difference between aluminium and copper, right, all the table values are all the same, but if you put the wrong table down, that's where you'll get burnt. All right? So when you start looking at voltage drop, there's two formulas. So we turn to page 85. The formulas are in the book. You don't have to memorise them. And if you turn to page... I think it's around 85. You add factors for groups of circuits? No, hang on a second, I'm mopping up by one page. Here we are, I only have a couple of pages. And, sorry, page 91, I apologise, that was in the other. So page 91, there's two formulas, determine the voltage drop from the ampere, from per ampere metre. We have the first one there, says VC. If you want to write this next to it, it's up to you, but don't write it in the school books here, but in your own copy. The VC, a thousand times voltage drop divided by length times current, 
That is used when we haven't got a cable size given to us and we need to determine the cable size. So what it'll do, it'll give us a rough value for that size. So for example, I do my length and all that stuff and I get a calculation of 2.98. I go to the equivalent table and I might have a value there of 2.43, which equals 16 mil. It has to be equal or under the value that you work out on that equation. Does that make sense? Equal to or under. It's not to be going over. If you're going over, the resistance per metre is going to be too great. The resistance per metre has to be less or equal to. So if I have 2.93 and I end up getting 2.73 or 2.43, whatever that's closest to it, that's the size of cable that we will work on. The next formula, voltage stock. L times I times VC. Length times current times VC. The VC value, so if I've got a cable size given to me of 120 mil, and it's at a V90, which is 75 degrees, I've gone to table 14, I looked it up and it says not, um, 75 degrees. I go along and it says that value equals 2.43 or 2.9 or 8.6, whatever that value is, that's my VC value that I use in that formula. What's VC stand for? Sorry? VC. VC is milliamps per metre. Don't worry about it, it's written at the very top of the table on table 40, you'll see it. All right, now all the tables that we use in this book are three phase, three phase values. If we want to go to single phase, we need to do something. So let's have a look just under the notes here. It says, note, to convert a single phase value voltage drop, right, millivolts per amp metre values to a three phase value, multiply the single phase value by 0.866. So what you do is you do your working out, you get your value, you times it by 0.866, all right? If you look up a value, because you've got a cable size, and you look it up and you've got a value of say 0.93, sorry, 2.93, it says here then to convert a three phase value, which you might find on the table to a single phase value, multiply the answer by 1.155. Anyway, some of the exercises we've got in there, you will work through converting back and forth. But all of the values we're using here are all three phase. If you need to convert to single phase, you either have to work back both ways. All right? Now, the thing is, so if you have a look down here, VD is the voltage drop, right? VP is the permissible voltage drop of a circuit, but it's not to run more than 5% of the value of volts. Can we open our rule books up now, please? In your rule book, under regulation 3.62, it says that we shall not exceed 5% of the total voltage over the length of the furthest point in the installation. And sometimes voltage drop can change. The set of mains coming in already might have a 2% voltage drop, and then you might go from that point from where your mains are that they come in to the furthest point, you might only be restricted to three volts. Now to work that out, if you go 400 times 0.05, that gives you 20 volts. 230 times 0.05 gives you 11.5 volts. So your voltage drop, when you do the calculations, on 400 volts cannot be less than 380 volts. Or on 230, what's it going to be? Less than 11.5 volts on 230. All right? So it's going to be 215, 217, something. So the point is, you can't have that below that voltage. What's the problem we have when we start dropping voltage? Yeah, higher currents and all that. So it's not unusual to have a larger size cable that might be well beyond what we call the capacity of the load at the other end. So for example, the train, the tram, the lights at the front in on the tram tracks. They're running 16 mil all the way down the middle and then running 2.5 or 4 mil up the front and the fuse at the bottom of the hole. Why such big cables? Because of the voltage drop that was required. Because once you get past 100 metres, things start to drop off because the resistance works in reverse. As we get further away, the resistance gets further, gets more and more and more, and it starts to increase. So that means the voltage has to increase to overcome that. But we can't increase the, the voltage, so we increase the size of the cable so that we drop the resistance down. Does that make sense? So a larger cable is not to give us more or less current current capacity, but give us less resistance per metre. All right? And like I said to you, things in voltage drop consideration is not about the temperature of the cable in regards to depth of laying 
or there's other temperature ratings in there we'll look at. There's other ones of um, depth of lane and all that stuff. That does change, or cables put together. That does change, but that's in more in cable selection. All right, voltage drop at the moment, we're all we're interested in, and it doesn't matter if it's protected by a HRC fuse or a normal fuse, the resistance per meter and the way we need to look it out with the current and the length is all we are taking in consideration to the formula. So what I'll do is I'm going to walk through two or three questions and we'll get to use the book. Alright? Thank you.